the scene when Larry Kudlow walks into Radio Row. Oh, it's really? like it's like Elvis comes in. Really? It was amazing. I mean, Elvis when he was still alive. Did he, did he wear the, the like the suit with all <laughs> oh, of the sequins? The, right? the, no, the no, he has the uh, the power pinstripe suit going there. He was a capitalist. Larry, thanks for joining us this morning. Hi, Larry, how are you? Hey, speaking of capitalism, uh, you know, we're we, obviously we've been talking a lot about the politics of what happened in New Hampshire and who's up, who's down, who's out. But I don't think we have taken a moment to pause and reflect on the fact that an avowed socialist just won by a huge margin <laughs> yeah. the first in the nation primary for the Democrats. What's your take there? My take is they don't like Hillary. <laughs> you really you think it was more a vote against Hillary than it was Bernie Sanders' well, uh, pop, uh, it positions? It was a combination of two, to be fair. And you've got a, a young, he swept young people, he swept, uh, swept young women. I mean, he swept everybody in the Democratic primary. Um, do they know what he's saying? I'm not sure. I think you have a left-wing populism uh, that's going on there, sort of the counter to Trump's right-wing populism. They're fed up. They're fed up with the government. They're fed up with the economy. They hate banks. They hate corporations. <laughs> uh, it's a very left-wing vote. And Sanders is a guy, I think, who right now is very, very attractive. All right, he's very, very attractive. He's um, has a lot of integrity. He sticks to his guns. I'm not sure that people have ingested his twenty trillion dollar spending and twenty trillion dollar taxing components. But I'll give you the story of my cab driver going from our hotel to the Radisson. Um, my cab driver is a young man, serious guy. I said, "Who are you going to vote for today?" He said, I'm not sure it's a choice between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. <laughs> I kid you not. Wow. But, but, but Honest the- to God, that's what he said to me. And and then I said, oh. And he said, yeah, I'm really sick of government. I'm really sick of Washington. And then I said, well, you know that Bernie's going to take all your money. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I do. <laughs> and yeah. I said, will that affect you? And he said, yeah, I think it will. <laughs> so... Uh, but, but the other side of that argument is, you know, Bernie can make the case, I'm going to give you a lot of free stuff. Everything. Free yeah. everything. And it's a wonderful thing. And he thinks it's Denmark. Actually, Denmark is, um, doesn't give it to you free anymore. Nobody gives it to you free anymore in Europe. But he also said that he really liked Trump's um, leadership and strength. He liked that a lot. So I don't know how he voted. So I'll probably never see him again. But you can see the populist revolt going on, and Hillary is not part of that revolt. Hillary is yesterday's story. Hillary has no message whatsoever. And, in fact, Hillary lost uh, most of the women vote, most of the ladies vote. So that's, um, you know, that's a conundrum, and it'll sort itself out. But right now, Sanders is stronger than Democrats want to admit. Okay, I'll just leave it there. All right, so what happens in South Carolina? With Democrats? Yeah, let's talk them at first, and then we'll talk to the other side of the equation. Supposedly she's going to do better. Uh, Supposedly she's going to um, get a strong black vote. Okay, I I don't know that. I want to see, because I think Sanders will have a lot of momentum going into South Carolina, and I don't know if he has any ground game or not. I don't follow the Democrats that closely, uh, but I I don't think she's going to, you know, run away with that at all. I mean, I think that those two are going to battle it out for quite some time. Yeah, I, I agree. Anybody trusts her. That showed up in the exit polls once again. And this call to women thing is such a turnoff. I mean, the Madeleine Albright stuff. I mean, it is, uh, what's her name, Gloria Steinem. you got to come out for women or you go to hell. I just <laughs> think that it's so patronizing. It is turning off women. And Hillary is not trusted. Nobody, I don't know what she stands for. You tell me. I mean, she, I watched her speech uh, at night when, after it was over, and here she is railing on. I love this. She's railing on against Wall Street banks, okay? She's going to throw them all in jail and whatever. Half her money comes from <laughs> Wall Street, and half of that half comes from one firm, Goldman Sachs. So I, I just find it not credible. And... Um, how this turns out, I suppose, you know, the, the, the money says she's going to win and beat Sanders. Okay, fine, but she is such a weak candidate. Donald Trump is going to clobber her if she is in the general election. In fact, my dream ticket now is Trump and Kasich, 
They're just going to march. They're going to march through the South. They're going to march through the Middle West. Dems have nothing to offer except the same old, same old interest group uh, giveaways. That's all they're going to do. Uh, Larry, let, uh, you flipped over to Republicans there. You gave us your dream ticket. Uh, what do you First, what do you make of the defections yesterday, Carly Fiorina and Chris Christie? I know you've been a big Chris Christie observer over the years since he's the one Republican in your backyard. Well, that's true. Um, he never really got much traction, did he? I mean, he yeah. took out Rubio. Yeah, Rupert Murdoch likened it to a suicide bomber, killing himself and injuring his target. Yeah, I, I think there's something to that. And, I, you know, trouble Governor Christie, who I admire... I don't think he had a real message. You know, what was he telling you? See, message is so important. Everybody wants to talk horse race. You mm-hmm. guys are talking horse race. Yeah, we do that occasionally. Um, well, it seems God his one message, the message he kept going back to was, I'm a governor. I've handled crises. I've, I've dealt with things as a governor. And as a former U.S. attorney, I know how, you know, criminal justice works. I suppose yeah. that was it. It ain't much of a message. No, it ain't. I mean, the thing is, here's what struck me. On that Monday, I interviewed Trump. I interviewed Kasich. I interviewed Jeb Bush. And they all were pretty good, actually. Trump has a really positive message now. He's working on a positive, optimistic economic growth message. Uh, it's not perfect. Some of it's going to need refinement, particularly his uh, China trade stuff. But you can see that. You can see the speech afterwards. He talks about how he's going to be the greatest job creator in history. Now, that's good stuff. And incidentally, John Kasich, the same way. John Kasich's been feeling his way, trying to develop a message for many, many months, and he didn't do it. And yet, in the last 10, 12 days, I thought he did do it. When I spoke with him in his bus uh, Monday night, and I'd watched him in a town hall meeting, he has gone back to what I think is his natural habitat, which is a Reagan, Kemp, positive, optimistic, pro-growth message. And it worked. It worked beautifully. And if he stays on that, he's going to be in the hunt. I don't think he's going to win. I think Trump is going to win at this point. Um, The others, I don't hear it from Cruz. Jeb Bush had a positive message, too, I might add. But regarding Cruz, who I think is still the biggest challenge to Donald Trump, I I watched him in an interview um, last night on TV, and I I didn't hear a positive message. I didn't hear a can-do, solve message. I heard a very stringent conservative message which is okay right but it didn't have that what i call kemp mm-hmm. laffer cudlow forbes growth <laughs> optimism you know what i mean i yeah. mean that's people are unhappy you saw the economy despite the fact that the new hampshire economy is is decent the economy was still the number one issue right and if you address that and you say to voters, we are going to lower your tax rates. We are going to keep big money out of politics and government. Uh, we are going to curb budget excesses. People like that. And most of all, you got to say, and Trump is just amazing on this, He's take, this is the right-wing populism, which I love. He's doing what Paul Ryan and a handful of others are trying to do in Washington, and that is keep the corporations, health, insurance, drugs, K Street, keep them out. Yep. Larry, we're out of time, but you're right. You're great analysis of what's going on right now. And you heard it there, Trump Kasich, as far as Cudlow's well, concerned. That's interesting.